To begin this video, I'll be making a Damascus steel knife starting from the raw materials used in the making of Damascus. This here is my first Damascus knife, but I have improved upon the process in later Damascus knives, both on handle making and in the patterns. This here is a ladder pattern. You can see the little arches. And one more fun thing I've been working on, which I'll make in a later video, are Bowie knives with nice Hammond lines. This is another complex process of the Japanese sword maker. Uh, to begin the Damascus steel process, we begin with a pre-welded billet of steel, which is basically 1095 uh, steel on the outside and uh, t uh, 15 and 20 nickel steel on the inside. The uh, nickel steel is the thinner layers and the uh, uh, 1095 steals the thicker layers on the outside and uh, next to it we have the flux which is just uh, 20 mule team borax this will be used to uh, clean the metal before the weld and help with uh, preventing oxygen and scale from forming on the metal and then over here we have the coal fire just uh, waiting to be heated and in the coal fire, we'll heat our billet up to forge welding temperature with uh, multiple fluxings in between. Here we have the uh, billet heating up in the fire. When it starts getting red, we can begin pre-fluxing the uh, billet before we start to weld it. Fluxing is done as seen. It's uh, applied generously all over the billet while the billet is red hot. And then the billet is put back in the fire to keep heating. We'll know when it's ready when the uh, billet becomes a white, almost sparkly temperature. Then uh, we can begin forge welding. Now that the billet has reached the uh, hot enough temperature for forge welding, around 2200 Fahrenheit, we're about to press it in this 50 ton hydraulic press. As you can see, all the uh, flux gets forced out of the billet as the uh, press puts pressure on it and uh, the billet begins to weld together. However, this is only the first of about three welds here. It'll uh, need to continue uh, refluxing and rewelding until the uh, th about three separate weld cycles have been completed. More flux is added after the first weld. And the billet is put back in the fire. The billet has now reached forward welding temperature for the second time and it's about to be pressed again. The uh, second weld actually uh, helps to reinforce the initial attack weld before the first weld simply attack weld really doesn't actually hold the pieces together too well. The second weld really helps to solidify the first tack weld. And now the piece is refluxed and returned to the fire for the third and final weld before stretching of the coal.
stretching of the billet, I should say. After some stretching of the steel, it's now time to press it horizontally against the uh, grain. This effect will help square the bar. This step should only be completed after thorough forge welding or else you could risk separating the steel layers. However, you can see they're well, or, uh, forge welded very well because they're all stuck together. Also a higher temperature will help put less strain on the steel the first time you uh, press with the grain aligned vertically to the uh, press. As you can see the billets uh, lengthening quite a bit here. It's almost ready to fold and re-weld. Right now it's at nine layers of steel. After a fold, which I cut into four different pieces and re-weld, it'll be up to 36 layers. At that point I'm going to put a twist in the pattern. When I finish drawing out the billet and it's a uh, good enough length for me to cut into pieces and fold, I make sure it's straight one last time before I uh, fold the pieces or else the faces won't align evenly for the next forge weld. And now as you can see, the piece is pretty straight on all sides and relatively flat. Flat enough for when I cut it and stack it, it'll uh, the faces will be flush with a little bit of grinding.